Hey everybody, hope you're all doing alright out there. Before we get on today's video, which I think you should find pretty interesting, I need to point out uh, that I currently have this Regent number no. 1 Classic SE electric motorcycle on loan from English Electric Motor Co. Uh, but it's not relevant to this video, I just have to say, give you that information for uh, honesty, clarity, and hitting all the legal requirements to be an honest creator. Now, onto the subject. Hydrogen motorcycles. A few years ago, a couple of years ago, I made a video called Electric Vs Hydrogen, where I talked about the actual scientific realities of electric bikes versus hydrogen bikes and i basically said no you won't see hydrogen motorcycles it's not going to happen it's a 30 minute video it's too long for most people to watch so i understand that so i'm going to make this which is shorter the reason this has come up is because the big four as in like kawasaki yamaha honda suzuki uh, have basically got together and created a consortium as it were in japan to together research hydrogen motorcycles and because people have seen that they're doing this and they're being public about it everyone's going well there you go and motorcycles aren't going electric are they? they're going to go hydrogen this video is to explain why i'm going to say again no that is never going to happen and if you're now like well how the hell would you know more than what the people in japan who create these bikes know i'll explain in this video if you give me a moment and it isn't my opinion it's just science plain old science if our goal by getting rid of fossil fuel bikes is to reduce our fossil fuel usage and use more sustainable things like electricity or maybe hydrogen then the number one goal at the end of the day is for overall efficiency i think we can all accept that you know it doesn't matter if you get more miles per gallon if the overall cost of that vehicle carbon wise energy footprint wise is much bigger it's not solving the problem okay so i think we can agree on that point so then we look at hydrogen powered motorcycles. How do you do that? There are two methods. You either have a hydrogen powered internal combustion engine, which is the method which the big four are talking about developing, an actual, you know, noisy internal combustion engine run on hydrogen. Could be a really cool thing actually, as an objective thing. The other option is that you take that hydrogen, you pass it over a platinum catalyst, and that will then rip the electrons off of the hydrogen which gives you energy to power your motor on your bike. So it is still effectively an electric motorcycle, but what you're doing is rather than putting electricity into an, a battery, you have a battery of hydrogen gas, which is then converted as needed as it goes along. The problem with the hydrogen fuel cells is in the catalyst type bikes is that that requires platinum and you are converting hydrogen back into electricity. It's a, it's a, it's a step. When it comes to the internal combustion engine hydrogens, it's even worse because that hydrogen is going into that engine and you're losing a lot of it through noise, through vibrations, through heat creation. All of these things are taking energy out of that fuel and wasting it. You want the most amount of that energy pushing the wheels and making you go the place you want to go as physically possible. So that's the two methods of powering a motorcycle by hydrogen that exist. And as I say, the big four are going for that internal combustion engine method, which is the least efficient version of the two. So now we need to address the question of where does that hydrogen come from and its efficiencies and this is where the big problem is and it will be really obvious to you as I explain it. The way you normally make hydrogen is through electrolysis. This means that you take electricity from somewhere that can be green electricity as in from a wind farm or it could be from fossil fuel. Most of the hydrogen that's created today is made through fossil fuel means so it's still using fossil fuel so we can't do that you've got to go with the green options. So, you know, wind, solar, wave, all of that. So you take your electricity, you put that into a big tank of water with an anode and a cathode, you pass the electricity over it and that will split water into hydrogen and oxygen. You then take said hydrogen, you then have to put that hydrogen into tankers. You then have to take those tankers down to the stations, like petrol stations. They're not petrol stations anymore because they've had to take the fuel tanks out from underground to get rid of the pumps, put all of the new infrastructure in for it to hold hydrogen. You also need to fuel the vehicle that takes that hydrogen to the station. People have to drive their vehicles to the hydrogen station to then fill them up. Great, you've got a very high power dense fuel, you'll get really good mileage out of it and you can fill it in seconds. That solves two of the big problems with batteries and electric, fine. So let's say the person's gone to the hydrogen station, they filled up their bike hydrogen and now they drive around with an internal combustion engine hydrogen 
wasting loads of electricity. So for a hydrogen, you can take the green energy, you have to convert it, move it, store it, collect it, and use it at a great disadvantage to efficiency, or you take the original electricity that came from the green source at the very beginning, you distribute it through cables that already exist out there now, you put that into a battery and you ride the bike. Electric bikes will be the future over petrol bikes. They will not be hydrogen. I'm sorry, the science doesn't support it. It doesn't help the end goal of using less fuel. Yes, it gets rid of using fossil fuels, but it would be very wasteful with something so precious as a green fuel to turn that into hydrogen. It doesn't make net sense at the end of the day. Why the big four are continuing to push down this line, and they have been for a long time. Um, Suzuki a few years ago made some hydrogen powered uh, Bergmans and they gave those to the Met Police to use and they were quite happy with them. And this is the thing, as a vehicle, a hydrogen powered bike could be a great thing. As I've said, you can fill it up in moments and you're gonna get a really good range out of that fuel. I am fully willing to see what that is like as I am to try electrics and everything that comes along but I can't get away from the science. There is another side to this, which you know people say about how they don't like the idea of having electric batteries between their legs, because in a crash it can turn into a fire, or in their house it could explode and catch fire. That generally happens with cheap Chinese import stuff, which is not properly protected. It doesn't happen with decent, decent stuff. If you're riding on a hydrogen bike, you are going to need a tank of uh, maybe seven, 8,000 PSI, between your legs or wherever it is on the bike. That in itself is way more dangerous, way more dangerous because if that goes up, that is explosive, that will, that will kill you. An electric bike fire may burn you, but and it can be ferocious, but it is not going to literally tear you limb from limb if that thing explodes. There is another side to this as well that people may have not considered, which is in apartment blocks, which is the sort of thing we may be living in in the future. Where do they have the garage at the bottom of the building? If they're electric, they charge them down there, fine. If you have hydrogen vehicles down there and they have any leak to them, hydrogen is lighter than air. It's going to travel up through the building, filling the building nicely to a nice stoichiometric ratio, which means that when someone lights their gas stove or something, ba-boom! That doesn't happen with electrics. I'm also not saying there isn't a place for hydrogen. There absolutely is. It's in aviation. JCBs, long haulage, and things which have to work a lot of the day and have to go a long way. So there you go, there is my short, concise version of a half an hour video. Obviously I have not mentioned every single thing there is to mention. There is a lot of stuff to cover still, but the basics of it, the reason why I don't think it's gonna work is because the very fundamental basis of everything that we are trying to do is to increase efficiency and reduce energy usage. And we are not about to replace internal combustion engine motorcycles with internal combustion engine hydrogens or even hydrogen fuel cells they will be electric motored with a battery yes there's problems with the lithium i've got videos talking about that but there's also other technologies coming along which may replace our need for lithium may increase the range and increase the charging capabilities and speeds of motorcycles the fastest charging motorcycle that i have ever used was an evener gk eva rebelli it could go from i think it was 20 to 80 percent in 30 minutes and that was only at 22 kilowatts some cars are currently charging at 200 kilowatts you could fill a bike battery as long as you can get the cooling down in five minutes and you'll have an absolutely stonking machine with as much range as a petrol if you wish to disagree with me please do i'm always willing to be corrected but you're going to need to correct the science and not just say something which is your opinion that I can just reply with another video that I've made or saying, sorry, that's not how the science works. Oh, one last thing is, well, okay then, Spicy, well, why is the big four talking about this? This is the reason I believe, because Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, all of those have specialised in making internal combustion engines and the technology of that. If they then have to replace them with electrics, the entire playing field has just been leveled because when it comes to like, you know, the frame of an engine, the brakes and stuff like that, that's much of a muchness. The engine is where a big difference is made and it's what each of the manufacturers holds on to as their, you know, the, the worth of all of their efforts until this point to have those sorts of engines and that technology. Without that, they have nothing and they are now literally neck and neck with anyone who can work with a battery, a charger, a speed controller, and a motor, and a frame. 
you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new here, and if you want to support this channel, please consider doing that through Patreon. I would really appreciate it. Till the next one, bye-bye.